And so I, yeah. did, I went through this process 22 times, uh, not 22 times. I also made six new decks that I don't have right now because I stopped to order the cards. But, so I did 28, which is a lot. Um, and it's gonna be a couple months, if not like a whole year before I actually buy all the cards for all those decks because it's a lot of cards. But the point is, like I went through and I was like, oh, a couple of my decks don't even have win cons. That's no good. You know? Oh, well, beyond just... They don't have direct win con, right? Right, yeah, so, like, let's... The last deck I did was my Animar deck. Right? And the win cons in Animar before were win through commander damage because Animar can get really big. Yeah. Or cast Primal Surge and hope you don't hit a one of the three non-land cards in the first five cards. Um... But now, I refuse to fall here. you know, I I can win through just just casting all of the creatures in the deck because I added like you know classic stuff like Perforos, right, and and Impact Tremors, just like stuff on ETB triggering because if I'm just casting a bunch of creatures, I as well benefit from it beyond just having a bunch of creatures, but. Learned one. I learned one very interesting thing uh, about morph creatures because the deck is a morph creature theme. Um, first off, I discovered that there's a card that buffs colorless creatures specifically. It was printed somewhat recently, okay. so I added that in because why not? But another thing that I know I found out that's really bizarre to think about is that morph creatures don't have any abilities. Mor morphed or 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 manifested creatures do not have any abilities. They're just they're just creatures, right? They they're just, just hang out. They're just they're they're nameless, typeless creatures. Yeah. They're nameless, typeless, colorless creatures. A text box but, is empty. But the weird, but yeah, the text box is empty, which is weird to think about because you can pay the cost on the underside of the card and flip it over. That still exists, no but it's not an ability on the front yeah. side of the card, so Muragonda pe Petroglyphs works on them. <laughs> oh, okay. So I added that to the deck, so now I have a deck that actually uses <laughs> Muragonda Petroglyphs to great effect. It's really funny. It's oh, <clears throat> Yep, it's specifically, if you dig into the rules, it's because the the ability that lets you flip the creature over is expressed via reminder text. Okay. And therefore doesn't have any bearing on whether or not the creature has abilities. It's it's a reminder text is one of the weirder things in magic. It's why you can run um what's the card? Is it blind obedience? There's a mono white card with extort. And if yeah. you play Commander, you might think you can't run cards with Extort in a deck that isn't Orzhov color. Yeah, but Extort is in the reminder text specifically. The, the mana symbol for Extort is in the reminder text. Yeah. Therefore, it doesn't contribute to the card's color identity. <laughs> so you can run a mono white Extort card in any white color deck that doesn't have to be black and vice versa. Weird stuff like that when deck building. It's just stuff stuff you learn when you, when you do enough of this. That being said, now that I think about it, maybe I should add blind obedience to my mono white deck. Hmm. Not a bad idea. But that deck doesn't really need that sort of thing going on. Anyway. So yeah, I learned that. Um but yeah, just like win win cons, won, like right? my Zedru deck. Right. It had one win con card. And the I win con my role it would have been? Uh it's transcendence. So transcendence I... says if you have more than twenty life you lose the game. Ah uh, yeah. And the idea is, you know, get get under twenty life and then hand it out to people 
and then they die, and then the card comes back to you because it's it, it's a permanent owned by you when it, when, it, when the controller lost the game, and then you hand it to the next player, and so on. Now the problem with that is, of course, Zedra's ability gains you life. Yeah. And. I know. That, so that, that that was the like the only real win con I had in the deck. So that is that's why the just deck keeps basically going. never won just don't when step I played on it. Any sea slugs, okay? Why not? It had. What's the big deal? It's just that it isn't pretty. Their insides squish everywhere. Yikes. Squish. That sounds Weesh. pretty traumatizing. Then again, if you pickle their innards, it makes for a great snack. You eat them? Oh, don't be a baby. You've had worse. Forget the sea slugs. Try not to step on the coral. Good point. Coral is alive and needs our protection. Or maybe it's because some of it can be sold for jewelry. I didn't mean either of those reasons. Although Manon appears similar to Maclear Beach, it was formed by a completely different process. Now that you mention it, this area is covered by rocks. Maclear is just your average seashore. But Manon here was made by the slow corrosion of seaside caves. They were worn away by the waves? That too. But mainly... It was the handiwork of a rock-eating species of coral, known as ravening table coral. Stay in contact long enough, and they'll melt your flesh right off. Ah, ah so that's why it tingles every time I touch the coral. <laughs> why didn't you warn us earlier? Ah, uh, excellent. Ah. So yeah, I only had one Don't one real win. Well, I had one and a half win cards. Well, that being said, like, you can have a deck with no direct win con like that that wins by playing the game. It's just that's going to be a slow deck that's going to be beat out. But sometimes those decks are fun. Right. So the other, like, card that you could consider a win con in the deck was on, Mirror Sigil Sergeant. Yeah. Which, um, so 4-4 four, four with Trample copies itself every upkeep if you have a blue permanent. And uh, the idea is the deck's already a pillow fort deck, so I could wait four or five turns and have 30 uh, rhinos and trample over people. Uh, but I ended up cutting that card. Just because that's too many turns for someone to draw into a board wipe. Instead, I replaced it with a, a new card that was recently printed, which is much more rude. Uh, called Nine well, Lives. All sorts of things popped out. Yep. It's a which, uh, it's an enchantment. It has, um, X proof. And it says, uh, if you would take damage, instead prevent all that damage and put a, I forget what kind of counter, put a counter on, on Nine Lives. And then if it has nine counters on it, you lose the game. Oh, you sacrifice it. And if it ever leaves the battlefield, you lose the game. Okay. Which is a much it's safer over, option for the deck. <laughs> I can hand it to someone, and then I can't get rid of it, per se. Ooh, wait a minute. I can get rid of it if I add enchantment board wipes. Don't waste my Which are time. rare, though. Yeah, but there's plenty. Of is. is it in white? It's in white. Yeah, it's possible. And it's doable. I should think about that. Uh, what color is it? Red, blue, white? Yes. Mass bounce would also work, though. Mass bounce. Assuming it's leave the battlefield and not go to the graveyard. Let well, if it's go to the graveyard. Yeah, I don't know. Let me look up. Let me look up. Because that, that wording is uh, specific. Oh, leaves the battlefield. Oh, perfect. My favorite stupid win condition I have is in my mono commander deck. You're, which is, you're, which you're, is sorry, you cut out your mono, mono what? Uh, mono blue. Ah, is that your sphinxes? Yes, which is, is that it's it's sphinx tribal. It is not a competitive deck, but it's a very fun deck to play. Yeah. Um, and it has, I think, three different counter spells. Uh huh that you can instead counter something to the bottom of an opponent's library. Ah, uh, right? and then you, and then you... And then you use, uh, I forget the name of the card. It's like, 
tunnel vision, I think. Something like that, that you name a card and then they... Name a card, target player mills their library until they reveal that card. And if it's not in the deck, you unmill. Like, it, so if yeah. you reveal and then put those in the graveyard. Yeah. So you're just like, hey, I'm, I'm sorry for countering that and putting it at the bottom of your library. Let me help you out by casting Tunnel Vision for that card on you. Yeah, it's great. Uh, that's a fun one. Um, but yeah, I uh, did I remove it? Uh, I forget. At, at, at one point when I was like iterating on the deck for Zedru, I was like, should I put... Um, Insurrection, I think is what it's called in the deck. Which just says, uh, gain control of all creatures. What about this one? Untap them, they gain haste. It's hungry? Bingo! Very nice! And, uh, it's just like, it's in the pillow forward deck, people will build up creature. People, oh. in theory, would build up masses of creatures. And then just steal all of them at once and swing. Mm -hmm. But I think I, I think I ended up cutting that. Have you been taking care of that rhino stagros like a good boy? Of course. I make sure to feed it every night before I go to sleep, since it's nocturnal. How long are you going to keep on calling it a rhino stagros? I don't know. It's a new kind of beetle, so it's going to be hard to tell if it's really a rhino or a stag. You're asking a lot of questions. Bienfu, do you like bugs? Duh! I love rhinoceros and stag beetles both! What guy doesn't find them fascinating? Right? So which kind of beetle do you think it is? Rhino or stag? Oh, that's a tough question. But guess what? Miss Mogilu taught me a surefire way to tell. I didn't know there was a way to tell. Yeah, but if I do it, you gotta name it after me, alright? Uh... Come on! What guy doesn't wish he had a cool bug named after himself, right? Bug! Besides, Miss Mogilu told me that this technique is so good that it's only fair to have a bug named after you in return. So what do you say, man to man? Come on, let's live the dream! Oh, all right. How can I say no to that? Besides, we all did work together to capture it anyway. Yay! Thanks, Laffy Set. All right, show me the bug, and I'll tell you what it is. Miss Mogilu says you need to open up its outer wings and get a good whiff of the thin underwings. Uh, I'm pretty sure I remember rhinoceros and stag beetles smelling really nasty under their wings. Is it really that bad? Why not find out for yourself? Uh, no thanks. I think I'll pass. Maybe you shouldn't do this after all, Bienfu. You probably just want to hog the name all to yourself. Well, too bad. A real man never goes back on his word. If it packs a mean punch, then it's a rhinoceros beetle. And if it smells really zesty, then it's a stag beetle. I don't know about this. Just let him do it, Lafayette. He's already volunteered. I can do this. Just you watch. <laughs> 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 this smell is the most bad, bad thing that ever bad, bad in it! Whoa! He fainted with his eyes still open! Hey! That's called wake being up. dead. Wake up, Bianfu! <laughs> Bianfu has you. departed. As soon as I smelled it, my nose literally exploded. He looks like he's having a bad dream. Uh. <laughs> I spy with my little eyes a kiddo who's spying at my bewitching waist. Oh, sorry. I just couldn't help it. What are those books anyway? Oh, that's a great question. Since you asked, I'll reveal the secrets of my tomes just for you. On the right, I've got my household ledger in the back and my magic encyclopedia in the front. That one I mostly use for oil blotting paper. What's oil blotting paper? It's a girl thing. The two on the left are my heavy book, which I use for flower pressings, and then my super pop-up book. A super pop-up book? When you open it, it pops out with the force of a raging river! 
When an enemy has me cornered, I can just open it up facing a nearby wall and pop! Instant getaway! The only downside is that it's a real pain to try to get closed again, so I haven't used it in years. What about the book right in front? That's actually Lair Cake. Whoa, really? It's all cake. Sear into its batter are precious bits of knowledge. Eating it is just as good for your brain as it is for your stomach. Wow, I had no idea that was possible. He's taking this so seriously, I almost feel bad. All of your books are so interesting, Moggy Lou. That's really cool. There's no end to your curiosity, is there? What do you say? Want to take a closer look? Boy, would I. If you really do, then say, Moggy Lou, I want to get to know you better. Moggy Lou, I want to get to know you better. All right, I accept. I'll reveal to you my most private secrets. Wow, so that's what's on the other side of these books. I wouldn't have ever guessed that. Oh no, Moggy Lou's flashing a what child. <laughs> Toxin, what? He good time for you to join, Toxin. <laughs> right to stand in the way of his desires it's my job to protect him as his vessel especially from someone so wicked as yourself also what you're doing runs contrary to public decency which is aren't supposed to be decent these bindings with the locks on them this style used to be really popular during the Meliodas dynasty now that I know you're such a bad influence for him I'll be keeping a closer such eye a, on you. Such a if bad you want to take it easy, nobody's ever going to want to marry you, you know. Like you're a shining example of marriage material yourself. Hey, Moggy Lou, could you turn them over one more time? I want to see how the books attach to your belt. Yeah, sure. <sighs> oh my god, there's so many. More book. Hey, Moggy Lou, I was wondering about that book you have on your waist. The one you called your heavy book, for flower pressings. Your curiosity truly knows no bounds, does it, kiddo? Okay, nobody else knows this, but since you're so interested, I'd hate to leave you hanging. <laughs> My heavy book, the one I use for flower pressings, is none other than... A collection of Bienfu's poetry. Bienfu likes to write poems? Yep, you'd never guess it, but he's actually just about the best Moloch poet around. Some people even call him the Great Norman Poet. Here, I'll read you my favorite one. If there is something unimportant happening to the East, I'm made to go there and back. If there is something unimportant happening to the West, I'm made to go there and back. I can never rest nor be at peace. Every day my life is a living hell. That's... heavy stuff. Isn't it? That's what makes it so good for pressing flowers. <laughs> it's so wonderfully, abrasively heavy. <laughs> Physically and emotionally heavy. Your face has gone all sinister looking. Ah. <laughs> uh, excellent. Oh, Cancel. big collection. You almost have enough for one chest. <laughs> don't do this to me. <laughs> don't don't speak hard truths to me. <laughs> okay. Sir, are you okay? Uh. Oh, oh, no. He, he was oh, thinking about oh. it. <laughs> he thought about it. <laughs> but uh, oh, that's right. I added other uh life-based win cons uh, to that dude. Now that we're back on that. I would have decided uh, like, to go back to that. Like, you know, like, uh, uh what's it called? Something Sovereign? Yes, Thelodar like, Sovereign. Perfect for the deck. Don't know why it wasn't in there sooner. Uh, Literally. You can't give it away. Like, I, I will grant it doesn't directly synergize with the fun part of Zedru. It doesn't, but it capitalizes on the, on fun the part of other Zedru. effect of Zedru. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's it, some of that stuff has to be. I also threw in an Aether Blood Source, of course, for two reasons. One, capitalizes on all the life gain. Two, oh look, I have to pay fifty hey, life to use right? it. Oh look, I'm in Transcendence range. Hmm. So I can drop an Aether Flux Reservoir, snipe someone, and then drop a Transcendence the next turn. 
And maybe we need one of these items to always unlock the next zone. Yeah, perhaps. We got this, we got oh, this small conqueror statue you check? and it opened. Oh, oh, you did? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, can you go up? 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 Okay. That's That did it. So my theory was you need the third item, but it's not always the third item. Maybe yeah. you just need yeah. maybe you just need at least three items from the materials. Could be. I'm still gonna we, we still don't have the other of course the, the special with, ones. So. Yeah. Uh, so I did that. I got Aether Flux, and then there was another card. Um, this is where me pulling up my, my deck list again. Uh, basically, I was like, how many how many evaluating how many win cons you want. <laughs> The other one was Approach of the Second Sun. Sure. Why not? Stuff, stuff that, like, capitalizes on this being a giant pillow fort deck that yeah. hands out items of chaos. Um, which I've added more items of chaos to the deck, too. This fight is over. Like, before I had a lot of cards that didn't feel like they did a whole lot. But this, I've added, um... Crown of Doom, which is an amusing one. The one Crown, Crown of Doom says no. whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, it gets plus two plus zero until end of turn. Okay. And, and an activated ability of two generic target player other than Crown of Doom's owner gains control of it. Oh, so no matter what, you're getting value. Activate this only on your own turn. Yeah. So basically stuff that like takes the heat off of me because they then have to deal with the stuff. Yeah. Um, Plus, it incentivizes your opponents to attack each other. Yep. Um, I also added Jinxed Choker. At the end of your turn, target opponent gains control of Jinxed Choker, Choker and puts a charge counter on it. So it just goes away at the end of your turn regardless. At the beginning of your upkeep, Jinxed Choker deals damage to you equal to the number of charge counters on it. And three generic put a charge counter on Jenks Choker here. or remove one. Okay. So, given that I can, um, sometimes I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll get hit with this, right? But Everyone since I'm in Zedru, I'm gaining life anyway. So it's not gonna hurt me as bad. And I can always just, Hand it to someone with Zedra's ability. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can hand it back at instant speed. How does this sword work? Before. Don't touch it. Before your upkeep. Before my upkeep. Uh, but I also added in Jinx to Idle. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, Jinx to Idle deals two damage to you. Don't and get careless. The other ability is sacrifice a creature. Target opponent mm. gains control of Jinx to Idle. But you don't have to ever do that. I don't ever have to do that. I just pay for mana. It's great. So yeah, some chaos items, right? Um, some other cool items that um, we're finished here. Let's go. Just let me swap control of stuff, right? Um, they added perhaps the greatest hello fort card in the entire game. Uh, apparently, it's four years ago. Uh, it's Pramicon Sky Rampart, um, and it's a it's a one five uh, flying defender wall. When it enters the battlefield, choose left or right. Each player may attack Don't only the nearest opponent in the chosen direction. And planes block is controlled by that opponent. So everybody can only attack the player to their left or right. Yeah, it's great. 
It's just someone someone with a really aggressive deck on, on my left. Oh, it looks like I'm picking left. Attack, kill everyone else before you get to me. That's great. And then I added a couple draw payoffs since uh, I'm drawing a lot of cards with Zedro. You know, typical psychosis caller and good stuff. Um, a card that oh, I psychosis. didn't... Wait, what color is your psychosis crawler? What? What color is your psychosis crawler? Oh, psychosis crawler is just an artifact close. Oh. I thought it was a, for whatever reason, I thought it was blue. I mean, even if it is blue. It works. Yeah. But, um, yeah, not completely blue. Uh, another really good pillow fort card I found is Solitary Confinement. I didn't know this was a thing. Apparently it's uh, as old as Odyssey, so it's, it's it's old, but it says at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice solitary confinement unless you discard a card. Skip your draw step. You have shroud, prevent all damage that would be dealt to you. Hmm. But since I'm in Zedru, I draw cards on my upkeep. So, me not drawing the one card from my draw step is practically irrelevant. Yeah. It's really good. And then just, you know, some basic interaction and uh, just more cards that... Oh, I also changed out all of the board wipes to be ones that don't kill them. It's also very important. Um... So Divine Reckoning is an interesting board wipe. It says each player chooses a creature they control, destroy the rest. So, against a Voltron deck, I won't be doing myself any favors, but um, that's the risk you take. Um, Come on, really? Time Wipe, which is a really interesting board wipe, which says return a creature you control to its owner's hand, then destroy all creatures. Hmm. Which I'll have to recast Zedru, but that's not nearly as bad as command zone yeah and then the third and perhaps best board wipe is promise of loyalty and it says each player puts a vow counter on a creature they control and sacrifices the rest each of those creatures can't attack you or a planeswalker you control for as long as it has a vow counter on it mm. So you get to keep your creature, but you can never hit me with it while it has a counter. Really cool stuff. I like that one because, in theory, you could put that on not Zedru and then give that creature to somebody. I could also do that. I could, yeah, if I'm casting this without Zedru out, I could do that. Yeah. Not saying it's, like, extra super value, but it's just, like, an interesting thing you can do. Where Yeah. You have another creature on the field that's not allowed to attack you. Quickly. Yeah. So yeah, those are the those are the cool things I've added. I still have. Oh oh, that's right. That's another win con I forgot about. Uh, Triskai Decafile, uh, which says you have no Something maximum hand size. Teams? What? Yeah, you have you have no maximum hand 13? size at the beginning of your upkeep. If you have exactly thirteen cards in your hand, you win the game. Okay. And free and a blue draw a card. So, now there's uh, that. Oh, and I, I also, yeah, I, there's a lot of really good pillow fort cards that like were printed no or just like have existed, but maybe dropped in price since I first built Zendru. Uh, Silent Arbiter exists, which says no more than one creature can attack each combat. Mm -hmm. No more than one creature can block each combat. Didn't you have that? I... Mm -hmm. I thought you had that in your, what, Exalted deck? Oh, yeah, I do have an Exalted deck. Did I have those in there? I probably could just pull one of those out since I don't really use those decks anymore. Well, I haven't bought these cards yet, so it's fine. Yeah, yeah, I'm just pretty sure you had a card like I mean, I might. I, I very well could. Or maybe the previous iteration of the deck didn't want it. Maybe. But now it, it definitely wants it. 
Oh, and then one, another cool card that was printed. Right it's not anything to do with winning, but it's just a cool hey, card for the deck. Right? Um, Pendant of Prosperity. It enters the battlefield under the control of an opponent of your choice. Hmm. And it has the activated ability, pay two, tap, draw a card, then you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Pendant of Prosperity's owner draws a card, and then that player may put a land card from their hand onto the battlefield. Okay. So I get the effect that I don't have to spend mana on it. And I'm helping out whoever's behind. Sure. There needs to be a... Some politics. 